All right, thanks for tuning in today. Uh, Oilers Hurricanes tomorrow. So we'll have the GCL Diesel Oil Stream pregame show with Tom and Herndon starting at 6 o'clock. Then they will be on after the game with the postgame show. If you're watching on YouTube, hit the thumbs up button. He joins us every second week here on the Reed Wilkins Show. On the other weeks, you get him in the morning on the Nielsen Show with Sportsnet former Oiler. My good friend Luke Gazdick is checking in. Luke, you're on with Reed and Jay. How are you doing? You guys going to make me wait forever or what? <laughs> well, you were you were listening since 3 o'clock. That's incredible. I'm always listening, Reed. Ears are always open, buddy. Well, I appreciate that. I'm glad you're a fan and a supporter. Uh, so which actor do you want playing you? Taylor Kitsch? Who is the other guy? I've just been told. Oh. Taylor, Taylor Kitsch is a fairly popular answer, I'd say. And yet Jay got it. He's the guy, you know, made famous from Friday Night Lights, T- uh, Tim Riggins. Uh Mill not a good one too though. Was it Chris Evans? I, yeah, I, that's not bad. I, I see that. it. I, I mean, it's a yeah. good looking dude. Who wouldn't take either of these two <laughs> guys? True. Nobody. Yeah. Hey, I'll, t- I'll put it this way: nobody's comparing me to Taylor Kitsch or Chris Evans. So just as long as it's that- not Al, as long as it's not Harn, that Al Borland's guy, he can't. He's not playing me. <laughs> no, he's probably <laughs> in his sixties right now. So yeah, maybe you could do like a future Luke Gazdick, like how they did Old Man Logan. In Marvel, they could do old man Gazdick. Okay, I got a. I, I, I did do I, a. Hey, I did do a pretty mean Dave Schultz though. You gave me the the tip for that one though. That was great. If anyone hasn't seen the Borier uh, six part docu series on Crave episode three, the end of it, I fight Borier. It's my only scene. I no no speaking lines. Just just like a thirty wow. second scrap. But, they really uh, made. Yeah, didn't yeah. you have a big afro or something for that? No, that was the funniest part is I walked into the, I'd never been on a movie set before. And I walked into the hair and makeup truck and they looked at me and looked at the Schultz picture. They're like, we don't, we don't have to do anything here. <laughs> just Let's just give them some handlebar mustache. Just give me the handlebar mustache and we'll go from there. So uh, they permed, they curled my hair up a little bit, but it was cool being on a set and stuff too. It was like, uh, I don't know. It was a really cool experience. Did it make you want to do something else? I'm not going to lie. It led to other opportunities. Um, Dang, I don't know if I should or could say this, but I had to turn something down that I really wanted to do. It just uh, scheduling conflict. It was, uh, I'll just say it, it was Shorzy. Uh, I don't know how many Shorzy fans are out out in Alberta, but um, there was a perfect role in Shorzy in season three, and I had to turn it down um, just because of, you know, too much TV and scheduling. But I don't know. It was cool. I, I wouldn't mind going down that route at some point i'm not a great actor but i can throw punches on screen <laughs> you'd be a stunt man or something i don't know well you're, you're doing a very good job at what you're doing i, I want to ask you something here and the, the reason i thought about this is um some of the uh oilers digital crew you know the oilers plus the reporters and the the behind the scenes people you know they'll when they're traveling they'll post i mean they're you know hey we went for dinner here look we're in dallas look we're in nashville i know the players wouldn't do that because they usually don't want their wouldn't want their whereabouts known too much. Uh, but they, but I was talking to uh, Jamie and Paige from Oilers Plus about somewhere they ate Saturday in Dallas, which is which was pretty fun. And then I thought, I wonder, like when the players go out, is it always like it's expected? Okay, if there's 23 guys on the roster, Oilers have 21. Everybody goes together. Like a couple guys pick, or is it okay to do your own thing? Like what's that dynamic like for eating together on road trips? Man, I'm almost laughing just because these were some of the best memories and moments of my career is getting to eat with seven or eight of my teammates the night before a game. Like just that first and foremost to me is like when people ask, what do you miss? Like it's stuff like that. Uh, I found it. I don't want to make this sound bad to anybody, but it is rather it's kind of clicky. Like they're the team kind of splits into groups. I would say that there's maybe four or five large groups. Like when I look back on it, my first two years in Edmonton, we had a crew and it was probably eight of us. It was me, Nuge, uh, Justin Schultz, Taylor Hall, Jordan Everly. Uh, who else is it? Anton Lander. And we went everywhere together. So like whenever we, let's say we flew into, uh, you know, Phoenix, who's not there anymore. I just thought there was a steakhouse there that we always really liked going to. There was usually a spot in every city. It was either Italian, who if guys wanted pasta, or if it was either a big steak. And um, I always thought the best dinners were when groups combined it, and we had a bunch of guys there at the table. But I will say that these meals are rarely paid for with uh, individual bills. 
they're usually paid for by one person and it's usually decided in a hat by the wait waiter or waitress uh pulling credit cards um so those can be some st stressful dinners too uh <laughs> especially when we get to double digits uh and you know the bill is getting up there uh i will say i'm gonna give someone uh, a, a nice shoulder tap right now nuge was always good i remember once in phoenix i lost a bill for a large amount of money and as it came around to me he just slid he took the bill and put his card in there for me so the guys are always good about that man i take care of them on the ice and they took care of me off it luke i, I gotta i gotta dig a little deeper into this because it's just you know we're, we're peeling that curtain back a bit and I, I i gotta ask you know so let's say you had the bill in phoenix and it was a you know are you absolved from the rest of that road trip of of having to pay for the meal or is it Every time, boys, I don't care if you paid the last two nights, your card's in there. Oh, no. You're paying. Uh, it, it don't matter. So funny you ask that because we had a, a pregame meal on game days in Edmonton. We always went to this place called Allegro after morning skate. It was in the middle of the downtown, basically. And when you talk numbers, we had probably 15 to 20 guys. This is before we had meals at the rink and private chefs and all this stuff. Uh, so we went to Allegro and it was basically this put a bunch of food in the table. It was the best. We'd sit there for an hour and I said family feud because that's all we watched. We had family feud on one small TV and Nuge loved it. He refused to change <laughs> it. Uh, but we had a rule that you couldn't lose more than two in a row. So on your third one, that then you were absolved. But we want because you watch guys over and over. And you know what? We invite players that never like would never come and they'd come for the first time in like two months and ended up you know paying a four or five hundred dollar bill for everybody but honestly those were the funnest like memories for me like telling stories that it it's the last the way i explain it is it's the last well for me at least and i think a number of guys it was the last time you had on game day where there was zero stress like there was nothing once that was done I'm not saying you turned into game mode after that, but you were going home to catch your little nap. And once you woke up, like it, it's game time. So that was like the last hour of the day where everyone is just like sitting back and uh, it's great stuff. Yeah. I, 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 of course, we're going to talk about the team, but I got to ask you one more about this. No, this Jay is I better. Were... This is, this is, this is great. We got lots of, we got a long year to talk about. The <laughs> That's team. true. Because Jay and I were wondering this in the bullpen before we came on. So in you know in the off season, Drysital gets the massive contract extension. I know that he that he doesn't get that money till next year. But would there ever be if a guy has a new contract or just got a deal or got a significant raise that would be like, hey guys, I'll I'll get I'll you know the first one first road trips on me because I got to recognize you know I'm lucky here, going to share the wealth a little bit. I'll just take it on myself to pay for the first meal. Oh yeah. And I was the instigator at that. You know, it too. <laughs> like it, it was for anybody. So this is funny. I was telling BX about this on Saturday. Cause we, we were watching Rico had him Henrique and he signed his deal in the summer one year, but with Anaheim and it was a five by five. And so we had a group of, you know, 20, 30 guys training here in the summer. And I was like, Rico, where are we going tonight? You got to be good, right? You got to take all your teammates out here. And during the year, it was the same way. Like if anyone signs a ticket during the year, where are we going? Nice dinner on the road. And it was, you know what? It was always on the road. And I understand it sounds a certain way. You're not on the going on the road just to, you know, let loose. It's just the only time when like everyone is able to be together in one sitting. Right. So that's usually what the classy, classier guys do is, um, you know, they'll book out a rest, a room at a restaurant and take the, take the team out for a nice meal, uh, including training staff and um, athletic trainers and all that. Those are the best. I'm, you guys could go to Allegro and not be bothered by fans during lunch or nobody caught on. I mean, it, they had like a, a pr private room to the side. So we had to, I mean, 10 or 15 of us had to walk through the restaurant and there, there always was occasionally, right? Like a table wants to stop you and talk to you, maybe take a picture, introduce you, whatever it is. And guys were always really good about that. I feel like the people that were there at Allegro too, were always super respectful. That's what I did love about eat town edmonton is that yeah freaking oilers fans are crazy but like in the best way like they they kind of respected your space and and let you do your own thing and knew you were just kind of there to get a meal and get out of there unless you're mcdavid buying beer after the western conference <laughs> final though i do hope that was a uh 
Oh yeah, true. <laughs> Minority. <laughs> A rare circumstance. Luke Yazdick joining us on the Reed Wilkins show with Jay Millen. Okay, uh, we, we got you for a couple more minutes. So look, they're two and four. Uh, I, I do think the last three games were much better than the first three, but obviously, you know, the record itself and 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 uh, some of the special teams and some other little issues do have a lot of people chatting, which we'll get to throughout the course of my show today. But you know, wh- where are you, are you at now, seeing them through half a dozen games? Man, I'm still saying no concern. Like it's still so early, and that's what I keep talking about. Is you know we're we're talking a lot of hockey, and on TV we do a tons of prep, and we're always people are always looking for answers. Why? Why? Like how, what is with this start, and how? What is your concern level? But for a team like the Oilers, I have nothing. The only thing is special teams. But listening to you guys before I got on, you said it pretty well. It's especially things like the power play. If you have a pers- personnel like that and you have a certain way about how you go about those power plays and run it, you're going to have success eventually. And it's a huge part of their game. The penalty kill may be a little more concerning just because you did lose a couple guys. You know, Fogues was a great killer. Clowder was a great killer. Like you take two of those top guys out of there, but penalty killing comes with time and reps. And I think that is something that you'll see improve as the season goes on. As soon as Cough and and Mark Stewart get their hands on some of these D and get to work with them day in, day out, before and after practice, that's when you'll see these guys really kind of take off in the second quarter of the year. Let these good, good coaches that they have kind of instill some of these things and let these guys get some reps in and, and you'll see plays start to turn over. Concern for me, non-existent. Wow, that's pretty that's pretty blunt, non-existent. You're going to make some of our more negative listeners quite upset. Oh, well, I mean it's just you always got to find something, right? <laughs> like we we got to have be concerned about something, but I just think it's it's just too early right now to have any sort of panic, especially like I said when you have the personnel like Zach Hyman hasn't scored a goal yet. Like yeah. you think that's going to it's probably going to change. So, it's it's just time and reps. <laughs> Luke, does any of that creep into the mind of this, you know, especially this high powered top line that, you know, was supposed to drive this team and, and hasn't been performing as well as they would like? I mean, that you know, go back to Dallas game there. They they peppered Ottinger uh thoroughly for us to, throughout the first half of that game. Does any of that creep in or is it is it still pretty calm and cool? And I mean, I gotta I gotta understand it. It's gotta be frustrating. And and it would be hard to keep that in at some point. Uh, for sure. And I think if it was anybody else but Jake Ottinger and the Dallas Stars, losses like that would really frustrate you when they start to build. But when you go into a Dallas on Saturday and you play as well as they did for, call it the first two, most of the game, and you pretty much get goalied, it's tough to get frustrated. If that is the Columbus Blue Jackets and Merzlikens and you're losing games like that time and time again, this is a big week for them. Put it that way. What is it? Detroit, Colum- Detroit, Pitt. Like Carolina, tomorrow? Pitt, Detroit, Carolina. Columbus is the next four. Yeah. Car- yeah, Carolina's not playing that well right now, even though it is early still. But this is the, a week for them against teams where you can start to build here, start to build some momentum. Um, I think Saturday is, is just a case of uh, a really good goaltender and a good hockey team just getting goalied. All right. Luke, uh, always appreciate the stories. Uh, by the way, I, I still have your credit card. I'll mail it back to you. <laughs> <laughs> it's got insufficient funds yeah, on there. You're like, who's bo- <laughs> wh- when did I buy all these comic books? What is going on? <laughs> all right. New podcast, new new equipment for you guys and everything. Get set yeah. up and then give it back to me. We appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, see you soon, buddy. <laughs> all right, guys. See ya. Oh.